Unit 7 and 8, Fitness Testing. Section 1, Validity for Fitness Testing. Okay, so today's screencast is going to discuss what validity is and how we can define it, and then also how we can use validity to help us decide on an appropriate fitness test for a client. Okay, so the first um, part of this is really defining what validity actually means. So a really basic definition would be that validity is the accuracy of the results that you've collected. Essentially what we're trying to do with validity is we're trying to ask ourselves a simple question. The results that we've got from a fitness test, are those results actually reflective of the true result for that person? Now that might sound really confusing but if we consider an example it makes it a lot easier. So let's say for example Mo Farah does a fitness test in this case a VO2 max test and he scores a value of 90. Now the question we're asking with validity is is that 90 the true score? Is his VO2 max actually 90 or have we under measured it or over measured it? So if the VO2 max test is a valid test it means that the scores that we get from it are true. So the question is is that result true? and we'll look at some of the ways that we can look at validity in more detail but that's essentially what we're looking at. Okay so the first question might be that have we got any error? Now this can obviously affect validity because if we make any errors when we collect the data then it means our actual number that we collect the, the final result could be wrong. So there's a number of ways and here is just a few basic examples. Um, the first one is a beat test, um, so someone could carry out the beat test and as you know you have to run between two areas um, 20 metres apart on the beeps. We might have someone actually just measures out the distance wrong, so maybe they measure it as 22 metres and it requires everyone to run a bit further and therefore work a lot harder and therefore get worse results and actually the results that we get from that beep test are not a true reflection of their fitness. So that's one way that we can, uh, we can have error in our in our research. Another one is whether we don't carry the protocol out correctly. So for example the one minute press up test requires you to carry out as many good form press ups as you can in one minute. But if your tester doesn't check your press ups and you do some bad form press ups like you can see in the picture then you might actually score a really high result but it not be true. So again it's really important that we cut that out. Another example is having a warm-up or not having a warm-up. Um, warm-ups are obviously very important from a safety aspect, but they're also really important in making sure that our muscles are working at the optimum speed and strength. And so of course if a tester doesn't have a warm-up uh, for their client, then it means their client's going to score a poorer result. And again, it's going to mean that the test itself is not valid. So what's really important is that we try and cut out any sources of error. And what this means is if we do that, we increase the validity of our testing. And therefore, essentially, we increase the accuracy. Another really important part of this is how relevant the test is. So again, if we look at an example here, we have a tennis player. And we want to measure their agility. Now, you might have heard of some agility tests before. You may have even done some. A quite a common one is called the Illinois Agility Test. Now, is this a valid test for a tennis player? Well, the test you can see involves a lot of linear running, so in a straight line, and also running in and out of cones. Well, this is really valid for football because that simulates some of the movements that a footballer might do. However, it's not valid for tennis. Uh, tennis players do not perform those sort of tight movements in and out of spaces. And therefore, it's not valid. So for a tennis player, we must search for a more relevant test. And in this case, we use the planned agility test. You can see here this test involves lateral movements across the baseline. It also involves diagonal movements and linear movements. Now this test is much more valid. It's, it takes place on a tennis court wearing tennis clothing and shoes. And also it mimics the same movements made in the game. So this is considered to be a much more valid test. So when you're picking a test, it's really important that you pick a test that's relevant to the sport that you're analysing, and this will increase validity. Another way of looking at relevance is also, also to consider the part of the body it uses. 
So for example, you've probably all heard of the grip strength test, which is a useful measure of someone's strength. However, if we think about this logically, what is it actually measuring the strength of? Of course, it's only measuring the strength of someone's grip, so their hand. So again, how relevant is that for all sports? I mean, it might be a really relevant measure for, for example, a tennis player, because they require a, a strong grip. Um, however, it's probably not relevant to other sports. So for example, if you had a track cyclist like Sir Chris Hoy, um, the grip strength test is not a valid measure of a track cyclist strength. Of course, their strength is very much lower body. So it's quite simple, but it really is a case of making sure, again, that you've got the right test for your client. So, for example, if we were working with Sir Chris Hoy, rather than using a grip strength test, we'd need a lower body strength test. In which case, for example, you can see uh, Sir Chris doing a one rep max squat. And this would be much more relevant to his sport. So again, we need to make sure that the test is relevant to increase its validity. Okay, so if we just finish off by going back to our definition, we need to make sure that uh, our results are as accurate as possible. This makes them valid. Again, we want to make sure that the results that we get are a true reflection of someone's actual fitness. And we don't want any other uh, excuses or reasons why the result we've collected isn't actually true. So in order to make a valid test, we must make sure we reduce error wherever possible. And this obviously can be done in a number of ways, but essentially by following the correct protocol, we quite often cut most of the error out. Another way of making it valid is to make sure that it's relevant. It's relevant to the sport and relevant to the particular client that we're doing it with.